Good evening and welcome to part two of my double shot of bulletins today. I'm right after my live stream, so I hope you guys enjoyed my live stream content today. And I hope you're enjoying the large number of releases that I'm putting out today. Just doing some catch up work since it's been a little while since I put a video out in any event been all over the media lately about yet another asteroid having been discovered. Not a particularly large one. However, calculations have been made estimating that there is a small possibility that this asteroid come, could come into contact with the Earth over the course of the next 20 years. And so the media has been talking about this a great deal. But just how significant is the danger? If this asteroid were to hit us, how much damage would it actually do? And more importantly, how many other asteroids are there out there that are very similar to this one, or perhaps even a little bit larger, that we have yet to detect and might not detect until it's too late? <laughs> Somewhere in the solar system, there is a rock with our name on it. Although there is nowhere in the solar system where the rocks are as closely compacted as what you're looking at right now. This is the work of science fiction, not science. However, that being the case, it doesn't mean that there is virtually no danger from asteroid impacts in the near future. We've seen them happen in recent history at Chelyabinsk and not so long ago at Tunga as well. And this is the most recent rock that we have our eye on. And it's getting some pretty big headlines. For example, CBS News announced the asteroid's existence with this headline. NASA is monitoring an asteroid that could collide with Earth on Valentine's Day in 2046. The asteroid, known as 2023-DW, was only discovered on February 26th of this year, only a couple of weeks ago. And as a result, we don't have a hell of a lot of data on where it's going, how how fast it's going and whether or not it might collide with the Earth sometime in the near future. Right now it has what's called a Torino scale ranking of 1, which means that it poses no unusual level of danger. So the odds of this thing actually hitting us are extremely small. A 1 in 607 chance to be precise with the potential of hitting also on Valentine's Day of 2047 all the way until 2050 every year. Interesting timing for this rock. Now, it's also, interestingly enough, a stony asteroid, not the sort of thing that we hit previously with the DART mission, not a rubble pile asteroid, but rather something with a little bit more substance. It means that we could easily deflect it if we had something ready in time, but it also means that it could do a lot more damage were it to make impact. And just for fun, astronomers have already put together a potential threat path that this asteroid might take were it to impact the planet on Valentine's Day of 2046. And the path, for the most part, as you can see, takes it over the Pacific Ocean. But of course, it also takes it over some major cities, including Los Angeles. So just for fun, let's blow up LA. Let's go ahead and put the impact directly in the middle of Los Angeles. And by the way, this is not a particularly large asteroid, only about 50 meters in diameter, far, far smaller than the types of asteroids we usually look for. But at the same time, the force of the explosion is substantial. 2023 DW doesn't actually hit the ground, but it air bursts 4.8 miles above the city of Los Angeles with a force of 6 megatons of TNT, many times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb, and as you can see here, the fireball would be absolutely cataclysmic, with over 1.1 million people being killed instantly, nearly 1.5 million people receiving third-degree burns, 
many of whom would die later on, and over 2.7 million people receiving second-degree burns. In addition to that, clothing would catch on fire within 7.9 miles of the impact, and trees would catch on fire within 20 miles of the impact. All from this one tiny asteroid, but we better be glad that it wasn't a nickel-iron asteroid and slightly larger because that might actually hit the ground, or more significantly, hit the water, and if it did that anywhere near the coast, the consequences would be even more serious. But let's get back to this explosion. In addition to the fireball, you would also have a shock wave that would cause homes to collapse within 4.6 miles of the blast, and more substantial buildings would collapse within 1.2 miles of the blast. Although that would be pretty unimportant, because just about all of these buildings would be in flames at this point as well. The winds, however, would be a serious factor as well. We're talking about tornado strength winds within a significant distance of the blast site. These winds would be the equivalent of an F3 tornado, although the peak winds at the center of the blast would be about 169 miles per hour. This would kill over 12,500 people, and the reason the casualties are relatively small is because the vast majority of these people would be dead from the fireball anyway, and nearly all trees within 5.3 miles would be knocked down, but more significantly, winds like this would fan the flames in in a big way. But what would happen if this were a nickel iron asteroid and a little bit bigger, let's say about 80 meters in diameter? Well, in that case, if we had an impact off the coast of California instead of dead in the middle of Los Angeles, well, you'd think the damage wouldn't be quite as significant. Well, even a relatively small asteroid like this, if it were to actually hit the water, would create a tsunami of epic proportions. First of all, amazingly, this thing would create a crater 1,440 feet wide and 300 feet deep on the sea floor, and it would also create an explosion the equivalent of 24 megatons of TNT. The type of asteroid you're dealing with makes a big difference, and nickel-iron asteroids can be quite devastating because they are so tough and so dense, and so much of them survives a plunge through our atmosphere. Sphere. But most significantly, it would create a tsunami about 560 feet high, enough to destroy not only the entire city of Los Angeles, but also San Diego and much of the California coastline. And by the way, Hawaii would probably not escape devastation as well, along with much of Oregon and Washington state and a lot of the Mexican coastline too. So uh, you really don't want these things to hit the water, and any rocky or iron asteroid that's a little bit bigger than 2023 DW is capable of doing that. However, if 2023 DW were to blow up over the Pacific, that would not be nearly as significant. It could create a bit of a wave, but not that bad and that devastating. The only danger that this asteroid represents is if it happens to airburst over a heavily populated area area. And another problem, we really don't have the impact prediction of something this size coming through our atmosphere down to a finely tuned science. As we have seen recently with Chinese boosters entering our atmosphere uncontrolled, it can be a bit difficult to predict exactly where these things are going to hit the condition of the atmosphere, the condition of the weather, even the impact of things like sunspots can change exactly where these asteroids are going to hit, making evacuation plans very challenging indeed. Now, once again, 2023 DW is most probably not going to hit us. As a matter of fact, after further observations, it's probably going to be eliminated as a potential threat to our planet. 
But here's the problem. We only just detected this thing, and that's the case with just about all asteroids about the same size. Most of our early detection efforts have been focused on big things, large asteroids, comets, the sorts of things that could be planet killers, that could present a danger to the future of the human species, whereas asteroids the size of this one have generally gone overlooked, and there are far more out there that we haven't seen as opposed to the ones that we have, which means early detection still needs a lot of work. There needs to be a lot more investment in it, and there also needs to be investment in a quick response deflection system to get rid of these little things should they start to approach our planet, because we can't really accurately predict where they're going to hit and evacuate in advance. That being the case, then, we've still got a lot of work to do to adequately protect this planet. And even though the vast majority of the headlines we see almost on a weekly basis these days about asteroids that are passing dangerously close to Earth need to be taken with a grain of salt, defending our planet from dangerous rocks and comets is something we need to be taking very seriously, because eventually one of these headlines is going to prove to be accurate, and if we are not adequately prepared, somebody is going to pay a very serious price. I have now come within 3,000 subscribers of that magic 100k. Thanks so much to my new viewers. Please subscribe if you not, have not already done so, and also please check the description for various ways to support my content in the future, and as always, stay angry about space!